first vaccine has been developed which appears to prevent 90% of people contracting coronavirus. Describing it as a great day for science and humanity, co-developers Pfizer and BioNTech made the announcement on Monday. Their vaccine is currently in the final, phase three stage of the approval process. So far, it's been tested on 43,500 people across six countries and it appears to be safe. England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer Jonathan Van Tam was cautiously optimistic and said he'd be at the front of the queue given half a chance. If I could rightly and morally be at the very front of the queue, then I would do so because I absolutely trust the judgment of the MHRA on safety and efficacy. But that clearly isn't right. We have to target um, the most highest risk individuals in society. But despite the hope and hype, there's still an enormous amount that we don't know about this vaccine, which works in a completely new way, which has never been tried before in humans. I asked Cambridge University immunologist Claire Bryant for her reaction. So the vaccine is very interesting because it's a new technology for vaccines that's never been used before. It takes the genetic material, the code, in fact, for the virus spike protein, and they package it up into an oily droplet. And then you inject the oily droplet into the patient. The genetic material goes into the patient's cells. The cells of the patient make the virus spike protein and then an immune response against this is generated. Have we ever made a vaccine in humans this way before? No, it's really interesting. It's been something that's been under development and under consideration for many years and potentially had great advantages because you can make it quickly and relatively cheaply, which is indeed why this vaccine has appeared relatively fast on the scene. But it because it's new and because it's untried, it's not known exactly how this will respond when you put it into patients. And so that's one of the things that this trial has been able to show. You brought up the trial. Pfizer have announced that they've got these preliminary results. This is not the end of the phase three trial they're doing. They've got these preliminary results that show a 90% success rate. What does that actually mean? What that actually means is that 10% did get infected. And that raises some important questions because we don't know who those people were, what their age group were, whether the people that still got infected would then have gone on to get severe COVID disease, whether they were patients or people in the higher risk groups. It's difficult to know. We've still got lots of questions here. It's potentially good news, but obviously the patients we need to be protecting are the patients and in particular in the higher risk group. Because I was quite surprised that no one really leapt on that more when Pfizer made the announcement and said it has a 90% success rate, that people didn't say, well, who are the 10%? Because if they are the group of people who are destined to get more severe disease with coronavirus, then they're ostensibly the group that we are going after with this vaccine to try to protect them. And if it doesn't work in them, this doesn't really move us any further forward. Indeed, and it's something about which we have to be very cautious. I mean, a drug company, understandably, is not going to run with the headline news that 10% of the people that they vaccinated still got infected because it doesn't make for a great strap line. And these are the questions we need to know because at the moment, the data has not been released from this study. So none of this, this data has been peer reviewed. And until we see the data, who was protected, who wasn't protected, and what that actually means, it's hard to judge just how important this step forward actually is. Do you think they might have peaked a bit too soon? Do you think they should have kept this under wraps for a bit longer? Because there are other important questions like, how long will this produce immunity for? They can't know the answer to that because they haven't had the vaccine for that long and we've only known about coronavirus for a matter of months, less than a year. That's a valid point. Difficult to know whether they have peaked too soon and whether they should have announced it yet. But you're right, the key questions that we really need to know now are, How long are the antibodies present? Has it stimulated memory immunity such that in six, nine months time, if if you get infected, will will that trigger memory responses? Will it work in older people? We know that some vaccines do not work well in older people and they work much better in younger people. It would have been nice to have seen the announcement with the data to really understand what's going on. So it's an interesting question. It it, it would be interesting to understand the rationale for, for releasing that information quite so early. What do the side effects look like? 
the side effects when you have the vaccine are a bit like if you had a mild virus infection, not due to the virus infection, but actually due to the way that your body responds. You feel a bit lethargic, you feel a bit off colour, basically. And if you had to lick a finger and hold it in the air to get some inkling of of when, because that's the key question most people Mm. want to know is when, what would you cautiously say is the most likely date when your average person in the country can, assuming they want to, access a dose of vaccine? The majority of people, I would guess probably not until next summer, maybe even this time next year. I think we, we have to be realistic, but I think people in the higher risk groups and health workers and so forth, they will potentially um, be vaccinated by the spring, assuming the data is good. But we do have to assume the data will be good, will have been peer reviewed and that we'll all be happy that it's safe and efficacious it's going to work basically and give long-lasting immunity so still some way to go claire bryant there